Greetings everyone. You are welcome to this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we will talk about data file handling in C++. What are data files? Files are basically containers for data. They allow us to store information permanently so that we can access it later on and alter that information whenever necessary. Now, what are need for data files? We need data files when amount of data to be entered is very large. In that case, uh, other data structures like arrays or linked lists are not suitable and files are more suitable for storing large amount of data. When a program is to be executed at a later date with the same set of data. So we want to execute our program with same set of data. Data structures like arrays or linked lists are not suitable for storing data because the data stored in them is, remains in the program as long as the program is running. So we have to re-enter the data in that case and otherwise in the case of files, the data is stored permanently. So this is a better option. When the data for a program has been produced by another computer program. For example, data can be created by one program stored on any of these uh, devices that is secondary storage devices and then accessed or modified by other programs when necessary. When we need to store the data permanently. If we store the data in other data structures like arrays or linked list, the data stored is not permanent in nature. So if we need to store the data permanently, files is the better option. Files are required to save our data on a secondary storage device for future use as RAM is not able to hold our data permanently. Now let us understand the difference between arrays and files. Arrays, they are stored in RAM. However, files are stored in, stored on hard disk or any other secondary storage device. The data stored in RAM is temporary in nature. That is, it remains in, in the memory as long as the program is running. As soon as the program gets over, the data stored in arrays also gets wiped out from the memory. However, the data stored in files is permanent in nature. Arrays have fixed size and we cannot change the size of the array while running our program. However, files have variable size. Arrays cannot be used to share data between programs because the uh, array stored in one program cannot be accessed in another program. However, files can be used to share data between programs. Now let us understand file input output in C++ and here we are discussing streams. We all know that standard input and output operations in C++ are performed by using streams and the operations on files they are also performed by using streams. Now what is a stream? A stream is defined as the flow of data. Just like a normal stream which is a flow of water Streams in C++ is defined as the flow of data and file input output uses file stream as an interface between programs and files. Now, different kinds of streams are used to represent different kinds of data flow. The data flow can be from disk file to C++ program or from C++ program to disk file. There are two different type of data flows and we have two different type of streams. Output stream and input stream. Now the output stream, this is the stream which controls the flow of data from the program to file. And the input stream controls the flow of data from the file to the program. So if we look at this diagram, you can see this is my disk file and this is my C++ program. So if I want to read the data from the disk file, there is an input stream which functions between disk file and C++ program. Input, input stream reads the data from the disk file and then C++ program extracts that read data from the input stream. Then in the opposite case, if I want to store the data on the disk file, 
my C++ program will take the input from the user, the data which we, the user wants to store in the file and then insert it into the output stream. And this output stream writes the data to the disk file. This is how the stream functions in C++. Now file input output, we are reading, we are discussing classes. Each stream, we have discussed two streams and now each of them is associated with a particular class which contains definitions and methods for dealing with that particular kind of data. Now there are three basic file IO classes in C++ and these are fstream, ifstream and offstream. These classes are defined in the header file fstream.h and therefore it is necessary to include this header file while writing file programs. Now the classes contained in fstream.h they are derived from iostream.h. You can see this derivation. Fstream is derived from iostream.h. Thus, it is not necessary to include iostream.h in our program if we are using the header file fstream.h because it is inheriting all the features of iostream.h also. So it is not necessary to include this file iostream.h when we are using fstream.h in our program. Now the class if, if stream it contains the open function with default input mode and it inherits the function get, get line, read, cg and tell g. You can see that if stream class is inheriting from i stream class which contains these functions and if stream class is also inheriting these functions and it has open function with default input mode. Now the off stream class contains open function with default output mode and inherits functions put, write, seek, p, tell, p from o stream. We can see that this is an o stream class which contains these functions and off stream class is inheriting from o stream class and it contains open function with default output mode. And i o stream class is inheriting from i stream and o stream class and f stream class is inheriting from i o stream class. Now the f stream class contains open function with default input and output. Both the modes are present in it and it inherits all the IO functions from iostream.h. Now types of data file. There are two types of data files in C++. Text files and binary files. Text files store the information in ASCII characters and each line of text in text files is terminated by a special character called EOA. In text files, some internal translations take place while storing data. Binary files, they store the information in binary format. You can see text files they are storing in form of ASCII characters, but binary files store information in binary format. There is no EOL character in binary files and no character translations take place in binary files. Now let us understand the difference between text files and binary files. We are working on six different parameters. Handling of new line. Uh, in text files, various character translations are performed such as slash r slash r slash f uh, that uh, slash r plus slash f that is carriage return line feed combinations and these are converted into slash n that is new line while reading from a file and vice versa while writing. However, in binary file, no such translations are performed. Portability. Uh, text files, you can easily transfer the text files from one computer to another. That is, the text files are portable. However, binary files, they are not portable. They are machine dependent. And if the new computer uses a different internal representation for values, they cannot be transferred. So, they are just difficult to port uh, binary files. Storage of numbers. In text files, when we store numbers, they are stored as characters. For example, if we store a decimal number, suppose 42.9876 in a text file, it will occupy 7 bytes. All the digits, they will uh, occupy 1 byte. It will occupy 7 bytes. However, in binary format, this will be stored in 4 bytes, which is the size of a float. This is a float number, so this will be stored as 4 bytes. Readability. Text files are readable and thus they can be easily edited using any word editor and binary files they are not readable. We talk about storage. Text files they occupy more space. 
That is, we have already seen the numbers, how they are stored in text files due to character conversions. However, binary files, they occupy less space because they are stored as binary format. Accuracy, while reading or writing of numbers, some conversion errors may occur in text file. However, binary files are highly accurate for numbers because no translations take place in case of binary files and they store the exact internal representation of values. Now let us see how we can open the file. Opening of the files can be achieved in two ways. There are two methods, constructor function or the open function. Let us discuss them. We talk about the usage. The constructor method is useful when we have to open only one file in a stream. However, the uh, open function is useful when we want to open multiple files using a single stream. And in this constructor function, we create an object of desired stream and initialize that object with the desired file name. We can see the example. Suppose if I write off stream f out and then within the double quotes, I'm writing abc.txt. So this statement, it will create an object f out of class of stream. f out is user defined name. You can give any name and it opens the file abc.txt and attaches it to output stream for writing. Similarly, the statement, if stream fin, then double quotes abc.txt, this statement will create an object fin of class if stream, and then it opens the file abc.txt and attaches it to the input stream. Now, we talk about the open function. Uh, to open a file using the open function, we create an object of desired stream and associate the desired stream with the object created. So in this case, it, uh, you can open the file like this. You will first create an object of the required stream. So if I want to open my file in input mode, I will create an object of if stream class. So here I'm creating fin as an object of if stream class. And uh, uh, fin is a user defined name. You can always give your name also, any name of your choice. Now to associate this file to the text file abc.txt, I will write down file.open. So using the open function, I am associating abc.txt with this with this if stream. Then I can close this, uh, close the file. Fin.close will open, will close the file abc.txt, and then I can associate this same stream to another file. Suppose xyz.txt. So in this case, uh, the xyz.txt is associated to fin. That is the uh, input stream. We can see I am attaching multiple files one after the other depending upon my need. However, in this case, I can attach only one file to the uh, desired stream. Uh, let us talk about closing files. The connection with a file are automatically closed when the input and output stream objects expires. That is when they go out of scope. However, we can close the file explicitly by using the close method. That is, we can give the command fin.close, where fin is an object of the desired stream. So whatever the name of the object is there, we can associate close function with that and it will, it will close the file which is attached to it. Now, why it is necessary? Since we are already saying that they are automatically closed when the stream objects expires, but then why it is necessary to give the close command? Input in C++ is input output both in C++ is buffered. Input output operations, they are usually bashed and handled together. This is what buffering means. They are not uh, performed simultaneously, but they are bashed and then they are handled together. Closing a file flushes the buffer, which means the data remaining in the buffer of input output stream is moved to, to its appropriate place. That is to the file. For example, when an input file connection is closed, the data is moved from the input buffer to the program. And when an output file connection is closed, data is moved from the output buffer to the disk file. So it is good if we close the file explicitly. Now detecting end of file using the function UF. C++ provides a special function UF that returns non-zero, meaning true, when there are no more data to be read from an input file stream and zero, zero which means false otherwise. Uh, there are important points to note. Uh, now, let us first just see the program, how to use it. So suppose this is my main program in which I am opening and uh, I am creating an object of if stream class 
and I am associating it with any name. Here you have to write the name of the file. Then we give the file read statement. And how do we check the end of file? We will give the loop while not win.um. Unless or until the end of file condition is reached, I will perform all the operations. And when the end of file uh, uh, is reached, that is it becomes true. Uh, uh, my loop will exit and I will come out of this loop. Then there are some important points to note. Always test for the end of file condition for before processing data read from an input file stream. Use an input stream statement before starting the loop. You have seen that before the loop, I have given the input statement and then repeat the in input statement at the bottom of the loop body. See again, I have given the uh, read statement before the ending of my loop. It is always good to uh, perform the read operations like this. And then use a while loop for getting data from an input file stream. It is always advisable to use while loop for checking the end of file of the fi uh, file. Uh, for loop is cannot be used. Like it is not advisable to use because it is more desirable when we know the exact number of data items in the file. When we don't know, while loop is more desirable. Now let us discuss few file modes. File mode describes the way in which a file is to be used and the most common file modes are i use in i use out i use app which which is uh, which stands for append <coughs> i use 8 and i use binary now let us talk about i use in it opens the file for reading and the file pointer is at the beginning of the file so if you see if this is my file which contains two line my first file and learning files is fun when i open this uh, file in i use in mode my file pointer is at the beginning here. IOS out, uh, it opens the file for writing and if the file is already created and opened in this mode, all the previous contents get erased from the file. So you have to be very cautious while opening the file in output mode. The file is open only once in the output mode while creating the file and after that it is always open in any of the other desired modes. So when I open the file in writing mode, my file is empty. You can see even if it is created earlier and it has some contents, again it will become empty when I open the file in this mode and my file pointer is at the beginning of the file. iOS append opens file for adding new records. Now if my file is already created and I want to add new data to my file, I will use the iOS append mode. Now in this case, the file pointer is at the end of the file and I can add new data only at the end of the file. So you can see here, this is my file which is already created and to add new data to this file, uh, I will open it in iOS append mode and my file pointer is here at the end of the file. iOS 8, it opens the file for both reading and writing. File pointer is at the end of the file when the file is opened in this mode, but it can be moved to any location in the file using file pointer methods. So you can see here, when the file is opened in 8 mode, my file pointer is at the end of the file. Now I can perform both reading and writing operations using iOS 8 mode and I can move my file pointer to any desired location using the file pointer methods. In iOS append mode, I cannot move my pointer upwards. It can only be, I can only add my records only after the last record. So very important to note, however in 8, I can move the file pointer any to any location in the file. IOS binary, it opens the file in binary mode and by default, the file is always opened in text mode. And two or more modes can be combined using the bitwise operator. This way I can combine in and out mode or I can combine out and append mode. This way I can combine two or more modes. I can always combine in mode with binary, out mode with binary. This way I can combine one or more modes using bitwise operator. Uh, I hope uh, uh, you like this video and this is all for this video and if you like it kindly give thumbs up and you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.